Well, over the last couple of days, I've had the opportunity to speak with a police officer who was out patrolling neighborhoods here in Highland. And uh, a neighbor of mine who is a fireman that is serving uh, in Waterford with 24 hour shifts. He, he said he got two hours of sleep last night. Uh, I spoke with an anesthesiologist at a hospital downtown and a person who is serving in a grocery store in White Lake. And it has really struck me that these are the people in our present situation who are really serving on the front lines. They are protecting us and caring for those who are sick and providing for the needs that exist within the community. And I think when we hear stories about these people or interact with them, it can uh, make us begin to ask the question, what is my role in all of this? What is it that God would have me do? How does he want me to respond? And I think there's a passage in the Bible that speaks to this uh, very uh, clearly. And uh, it is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 8 through 10. The Apostle Paul writes, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And one of the reasons that I love this passage is it talks in two different ways about the kind of good work that we can do for others. And the first thing that the passage tells us is that there is no good work that we could do that will result in our own salvation. Uh, the passage makes it so clear at the very beginning. It's by grace that you've been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it says. In fact, he goes on in the next verse, in, in, in case you missed that, he says, it is not the result of your own works. And what that means is that a person is saved. They, they gain salvation not by anything that they can do. It can't be earned by credits that a person gets from church attendance or by living a moral life or by trying to be pure or doing good deeds. The Bible teaches that we could never do enough to earn our salvation. Instead, the Apostle Paul says it is by grace that we've been saved. God's unmerited favor that we receive through faith. He says, it is the gift of God. Uh, salvation is something we don't work for. It's something that we receive. And I remember talking to a person once who said to me that that was the reason they couldn't believe that Christianity was true. Th that, that it just sounded too easy. How could it be that, that God would open the gates of heaven to me and, and, and I would have to do nothing to earn that? How could it be a gift? And the answer to that question is that uh, the Christian faith requires work. In fact, it requires a, an incredible work for a person to be saved. The thing is, though, it's not the work that the person does. It's the work that has been done for us by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ did all the hard work. Not only did he live a life that was perfectly without sin, but he also perfectly obeyed God. In other, words, in other words, every box that a person is required to check, Jesus checked. He's the one who lived the flawless life that you and I are expected to live. And not only that, Jesus, of course, died for our sins as well. He died to, to pay the price. And, and what the Bible teaches is that anyone who has faith in Christ Anyone who says, I abandon any works, any effort that I would try to make to earn my salvation, but I trust Jesus instead, it's like Jesus' perfect record is credited to that person. And so, our good works do not uh, save us. They are not the cause of our salvation, this passage tells us. But it does have one more thing to say about our good works. Look at verse 10. 
It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, what this teaches is that while our good works are not the cause of our salvation, Paul says they are the result of our salvation. They, they, they flow out of that good that Jesus has done for us. The passage says that God's children are like his workmanship. And, and what that means is that each person, each follower of Christ is like a little piece of art that God has created. You might think of a magnificent uh, painting or a, a poem or a symphony that has been created. Each believer is like that. We are like God's workmanship. We become a new creation when we receive Christ. And that creation is created in Christ Jesus for good works. In other words, it is God's desire that we would work good. In fact, it says that God has prepared us for this beforehand, that we should walk in these good works. It's almost as if God, uh, in advance, created a path for us that he desires each person to walk on. And as we walk down that path, that we would do good to others. I, I have to say that uh, yesterday I went for a walk through my neighborhood and it was a beautiful day and many of the neighbors were outside and uh, I had a chance just to talk, stop and to talk with people and people seem much more open to having conversations and I, I just noticed that a different kind of spirit seemed to be in the air. People were uh, softer than they normally are and, and kinder. And uh, I think part of that is because when people's needs are stirred up and their anxieties begin to come to the surface, it, it, it helps us to realize that, that, that we have so much more need in our life than we often recognize. And, and it's easier now to see the various uh, needs of people, even within our community. And what I want to encourage you in today is that all of those needs that exist within your sphere of people and relationships, God has made you to meet those needs. God, in fact, has prepared in advance that those needs and you in some way would collide with one another. It is God's desire that as his workmanship, that you would do good in ways that he has prepared you for, even in advance. And so I want to just encourage you today to uh, consider how is it that God has gifted you and burdened you for good works? What are the things that you particularly feel that you care about? Uh, what are the desires that you have within you to serve and to protect and to encourage and to care for those who are around you? And who are those people that you have opportunity to do that with? What are the resources that God has given you to be able to provide for other people or to encourage other people or, or even to pray for, for other people? And, and what are the sacrifices that God may be calling you to make for the sake of other people? Uh, I suppose we could list uh, uh, thousands of examples of what that might look like in this uh, time for all of us. But I want to encourage you to reflect on what those examples might be in the particular situation that you find yourself in. But we can know this, that while our good works are in no way the cause of our salvation, they are meant to be one of the effects of our salvation. You are God's workmanship. You are God's piece of art and you have been created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared for you in advance. And what God invites you to do in this passage is to walk in them.